We have a weird homicide. In a scene described by one investigator as reminiscent of a weird religious rite, five persons, including actress Sharon Tate, were found dead at the home of Miss Tate and her husband, screen director Roman Polyansky. Among the other victims were Hollywood hairstylist Jay Sebring and coffee heiress Abigail Folger. Authorities would allow no one in an unofficial capacity inside the posh $200,000 home in the hills overlooking Los Angeles. When police arrived, they found the telephones and electricity lines cut. The bodies had been dead about 12 hours. They were discovered this morning by a maid who ran screaming to neighbors. One officer summed up the murders when he said, In all my years, I have never seen anything like this before. So we're on our way to Sharon Tate's house, but we can't actually get any farther than the gate because it's obviously gated, which I know that they've kind of like updated here and there. But we're gonna go check it out. Drop some roses, just because I feel kind of weird just kind of visiting and not doing something remember, rememberable. Turn left on Cielo Drive. Supposedly the rumor is that the Manson family actually parked their car um, after they came back down from her driveway, they parked to their car right here, which is where we're parking. And then right up there is, right up here is Celio Drive. A wandering band of members of a so-called religious cult with a leader they call Jesus has had three of its followers arrested in the investigation of the murder of Sharon Tate and six others. Those arrested are two women and one man, and the Los Angeles police said they would ask murder indictments against several others. Five women are being held as material witnesses. I'm going to spend a lot of time here just because it's obviously a neighborhood and it's being recorded. They have, like, cameras and stuff like that to show you a couple of things. We're going to have to be really quiet, obviously. And then um, just get out of here and leave some roses and say our farewells. Okay. All right, let's go. Yeah. Okay, so this right here is actually where the um, pole used to be. A lot of people think it was this pole right here, but it's actually not. Um, the Manson family actually had a, there was a pole right here that they actually climbed up and cut the phone wires, the phone lines. And then what they did was they came back around here and they climbed up and around. I think that there's somebody outside. Right here was the the pole, and they took it down, and they remodeled the gate. This is the address. the street on it looks like Bella Drive. You're not really supposed to park in this area but um <laughs> we're gonna just like park our car real quick and I think there's a spot up here that you can actually get a better view of Sharon Tate's home. You see the tan one with the blue top? original houses that were here during the murder is the one on the far left, the white and black one, and then you skip the next one and then the third one right there was also originally here.
So those were the only two original houses and then the other ones have been added. The body of 34-year-old Nicole Brown Simpson, ex-wife of O.J. Simpson, was found after midnight on the sidewalk outside her West Los Angeles home. Next to it, the body of an unidentified 26-year-old man. Both had apparently been stabbed. Simpson told police he was in Chicago at the time of the killings. He arrived at the home 12 hours after the bodies were discovered. Police escorted him to the rear of the building, and a short time later, Simpson was seen in handcuffs. After a conference with Simpson's attorney, Howard Weitzman, Simpson was released from the cuffs and taken to police headquarters for questioning. So we are now going to Nicole Brown Simpson's apartment where the murder location was of Nicole and her friend, Ron Goldman. Well, similar to Sharon Tate's home, Nicole's apartment, her walkway, her entryway into her apartment was also renovated. But I don't know if it's because a lot of people were coming over and it was like causing a lot of traffic, but we will see kind of where it was that they kind of moved stuff around. I'm not sure that we'll be able to actually see anything. We'll leave a couple roses for her and run. OJ, most definitely, murdered. Well, he wrote a book called If I Did It, this is how it happened. Right. So, I mean. Most definitely, allegedly. That's duh. how fun you drive. We'll see. I didn't know that this was here. But this is kind of, it's not like how it curved, but like if you look, the murder scene actually looks more similar to this where it has the gate right here at the end and then it's got the brick. So that's kind of like what hers looked like, but I don't know what it's gonna look like now. This is the newly renovated area right here. And a lot of people think that this is where the scene was, but this is not where it was. The old um, crime scene photos, you can see the police are standing right here by this tree. And directly right behind it is this right here. And this is where the walkway was to her apartment. The tree and was like right here. Obviously, you're not going to be able to see the actual, like, location from where the murder took place. We're going to go ahead and just leave the roses, like, right in this area since this is where they were found. Yeah, that's where it is. Tree right here is where, in the crime scene photos, you can see where the police are standing and directly behind the tree is actually where her apartment was. But yeah, it used to be right here. So. She was an aspiring actress who got the fame she always wanted, unfortunately. She got it by dying a horrible death. They nicknamed her the Black Dahlia, and her murder in 1947 was one of this country's most shocking and sensational and unsolved, until possibly now. Elizabeth Short wanted desperately to be an actress, but Hollywood didn't seem to want her. She lived on the fringes of the town, getting by on part-time jobs, but she never appeared in any film. And in a violent instant, any dream of stardom was suddenly destroyed. In January of 1947, Elizabeth Short's life exploded into the biggest headline of the day when she was found dead in a Los Angeles vacant lot, mutilated and cut in two. She'd been murdered someplace else, then dumped before dawn. We just finished going to Nicole Brown's apartment. 
and we are now at our last stop which is going to the Black Dahlia location. This is where Elizabeth Short, which was her real name, um, where her body was found with very gruesome details. Something about this murder was so bizarre to me when I first saw it. I think it was on Cold Case Files many, many years ago. And it's always been intriguing because to me it's been one of the most haunting murder cases. So um, this one is one that I've been anticipating going to for a long time. They also have renovated the area because it's now a neighborhood. I think before when her body was found, it was actually just an open field with a sidewalk. And surprisingly, the sidewalk is actually still there. And so is the fire hydrant where her body was found. So we'll actually get to see those. For the apartments that you'll see, they were not there before. It was just an open field. You can see that from the crime scene photos. And we will leave her a rose, just like the others. You can see now there are like houses. I think that there were houses maybe across the street. We are turning on the road. I was walking from my home, which was on Norton, and uh, the sidewalk were put in. And uh, as I was walking along, I glanced, happened to glance over at my side, and I saw this uh, a uh, strange sight. It looked like a, uh, it looked like a mannequin that had been cut in half and was separated and was lying there. And I didn't glance at it too long because my, I had my little girl with me. And I thought, gosh, as I walked on further, I thought, you know, that just didn't seem right to me. And I thought, these I could see these kids with their bicycles. And I said, maybe it'll scare those kids if they ride to school and see this. So I better. Uh, uh, you know, call somebody to come and at least have a look and see what it is. But I, the, the thought of a, a dead person did not enter my mind. I thought it was a mannequin because it was so white. Here is the fire hydrant that you can see in the photo. Investigator or the detective in their incident report. He had started walking, I think it was 52 steps, but he started walking from here and he went to where her body was found and I think it was about 52. So she was found right there. All of this looks exactly the same. The only difference is that the apartments or the houses right here were not here before. And she was discovered by um, a local woman who was actually walking her three-year-old. And they thought that they had seen a mannequin, but it wound up actually being her. So if you're ever coming to visit, you can you know where exactly it is because of this sign right here, and then directly just like right in front on the grass. In the view of where she was found, way back there, you can actually see the hills and the Hollywood sign. Really, really interesting with her uh, being an aspiring actress. It's just, it's I don't know, it's sad. Yeah. We each are gonna lay a rose for her. 